Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we would be discussing the problem rat maze with multiple jumps. In this problem, we are given a n into n matrix of blocks where the source block is the upper left most block. So we are given a matrix like this where the source block is this and this is the target block. And we need to follow a path and then find the target block. And then the destination block is the lower most rightmost block. Yes. This is a rat start from the source and has to reach the destination and it can move in only two direction. Okay. First, if forward or down. Okay. So if this is zero, zero and this is zero, one, then it can move to Y plus something that is X. Suppose it is X. Then it can go down. So one, zero, then it is nothing, but the X coordinate is added. Let's make it to something known as P this side. And then it can jump to a suppose uh, Q this side. So X plus Q and the Y would remain the same itself. So now it can jump like this. So now if there are multiple solution exist, then the shortest earlier hop would be accepted. This means that you just need to prefer what you need to prefer. It is given here for the same distance at any point forward would be preferred. That is going on that side would be preferred. So you don't need to care about the shortest distance. Just when you would start hopping, first see if you can move forward or not. And then that would give you the value. In the matrix, zero means that, that the block is a dead end. That means you can't take a jump. So the value of this P and Q would be mentioned in the block that you are standing itself. Okay. So now we need to think of this. So let us first solve the sample test case. In the sample test case, we are told the first block can make a jump of two. The next block can make a jump of one, then zero, and then zero. Then we have three, then zero, then zero, then one. I'm just copying out all these test cases in the corresponding order. Then it is zero, it is one, this is zero, and this is what? And then this is zero, zero, and this is one, and one. Now, how did he hop into this? So first, he is standing at this position. Then he has hopped onto this position. Okay. Then he has hopped onto this position. Okay. Fair enough. Then he has hopped onto this position. Then he has hopped onto this position. So the path is like this. Yes, the same way it is. Okay, fair enough. This is how you can process the path and you can reach the destination itself. So now you should think of an approach by which you can solve this. Okay, the way to solve this is absolutely a very easy way. Okay. So what we can say is if we would stand here and we would take a jump of two. Okay. We can jump in forward as well as down. So what we would do is if it is within the boundary, we would jump in both the scenarios and the scenario in which we would reach the end. That would be our value. Suppose if it is not reaching the end, then we would simply come back and we would go this side. This is just a way of backtracking. So whenever we have a path problem, the first thing we should think of is recursion. And then we need to see that we need to go back or not. If we need to go back, then we should think of something known as backtracking. So we, we would see, suppose we can jump in two also, two also. So we would move in either ways. And the one, suppose this has not led to a solution. Suppose we went to this and after this, the road become blocked. So this didn't lead to the solution, but this led to the solution. So if this is led, didn't lead to the solution, we would stop at this position. But this led to the solution. So we would say, yes, this is, this is how we would compute it. And you would, now there are some more aspects to it. Now, the next aspect is before jumping to a particular way, if suppose you are moving on the forward. So we would check if that is within the boundary or not, or else we would find index out of bond and it would be an endless size of matrix that we need to traverse. And that won't be the answer. So there is no point in moving in that way. So within the boundary, we, it would be very much feasible itself. Then suppose we are not able to reach at this condition, we need to return minus one in that scenario. Else we would say that, yes, it can be reached here. Yes, it can be reached here. So we would see to it how we are going this. So now the first, so now we should, the first thing we, should, we are doing backtracking. So we should think of recursion. Then we should think of the base cases. Okay. So now what is the base case itself? The base case is the smallest case that can be, that can be solved by ourselves. So what is the smallest case? The smallest case is that we are standing at there. There is only one block and we are 
failing at that position so whatever be the condition we would say that yes this is true that we were standing on this condition and there is no point in moving from source to destination so that is done so if we are at the last block that means yes we have a destination else what we would do is we would have a for loop on the steps now for each step we would try to move on the forward hand side if it is within the boundary or then we would try to move on the down hand side if it is within the boundary then we would move to this okay seems very simple now when we would start implementing it we would get a better hang of it now we would start from here itself so first we would design a function that would return true or false it would return true if it is within the boundary of the matrix if it is not within the boundary it would return it but how did we determine this determine this we can see that it is an n cross n matrix so the first value would be 0 and the last value would be n minus 1 and the rest all of the values would lie in between 0 and n minus 1 so if any value is less than 0 or any value is greater than n minus 1 that means it is not valid so we would take advantage of this fact and we would say that if it is less than 0 or greater than equal to minus 1 greater than greater than n minus 1 then we would simply say false else it is true itself okay fair enough so we would just write goal save itself then we would take int x and then we would take int y and then the whole matrix itself so we would just write it name it as okay so that we don't need to write matrix again and again okay now we got this now what we would do is we would take the value of int n n is equals to m dot size we don't need to do m zero dot size why because it is an n cross n matrix we definitely know that so the number of rows would be equal to the number of columns so return okay so if x is less than zero or x is greater than x is greater than n minus so x is greater than equal to n okay greater than equal to n or 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 y is less than 0 or y is greater than equal to n itself then in all the scenarios we would return false else we would return true okay less than 0 greater than equal to n minus 1 y is less than 0 y is greater than equal to n in all the scenarios we would return false else we would return true so now this is perfectly fine itself then we would move forward and we would design a helper function okay helper function is nothing but the back tagging function which would iterate on the number of steps and it would try to move first forward and then it would go downwards okay fair enough then we would first take a value in x and in y that is the current index where we are standing because if we know the current index then only we can move this side or that side okay fair enough then we would take the matrix itself and we would name it as m x then we would go down so first we would write the base case so in the base case we would say that if we have reached the end that if x is equal to n minus 1 and y is also equal to n minus 1 that we have reached the destination then we would say that yes please return true so before that what we would do is call uh, x and y i would name it as 1 and then i would return it as 2 so this would we would pass the call one okay and then we would need the stall and then we would also need the matrix yes that is already given okay so we need the solution and we need the matrix then we would go down okay let's keep the matrix at this place before the solution okay by the way this ampersand sign is telling us that we are passing pass by reference that is means we are passing the address and any value that is edited in this function would keep it remain unchanged we won't edit the copy of the given to the array itself okay if it was just an array then we would uh, there, then there is no need to pass by reference because array get passed by reference only but as this is a vector though we are passing it by reference that is why we are going down and after this step we need to go first go on which side first we need to check that if the current value we can visit or not so if the current value is visited that we are at the x and y so we would say that if 
state of the given x and y, the place where we are standing. We can reach here, no? So I will just read. And if it is safe, then what we would do is, then we would say that solve of x and y is equals to true. So we would say the current position, yes, we can visit. We have not reached the end. So if it is within the boundary, we can reach it. Fair enough. Now, if it is within the boundary, what we would do is int i is equal to one step. i is less than, less than what? Less than equal to m of m of x and y itself. Okay. m of y itself. And then m of y itself. And the number of steps i is less than n itself okay and then i plus four okay so it, it should be within the boundary because suppose the val given value is two then if we take the given value is two and the space left is only one then we would just take a jump we would be outside the boundary but the destination is to but the uh, but the goal is to reach at the end not outside okay that is why we would we are doing that so if the helper function if the helper function is x so we have seen that this value is nothing but we are going on this side so 0 0 and then 0 1 0 1 x is same and y is increasing that is why we would just go here x would remain the same and we need to prioritize over the forward space so y plus equals to the step we are going to take then we are going m and the solution itself we are having this now if we are able to reach suppose this moving forward this side and we are able to get a co correct value then we would return true okay we would return true now the second way we can do it is we would just copy this and then we would paste this now this was one zero one one zero 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 one next the downside would be one zero that is why we would be x plus i and y itself okay fair enough and then we are returning true else if it is not all this condition that we are not able to revolve this then what we would do is solve of x and y is equals to the zero itself and then we would return false that is we can't visit this position okay and then even after all this we are not able to return a true value so we would return a false value Fair enough. Now the position comes where we would be asking. So we would be asking for the upper value. Okay. So int m n is equals to m dot i itself. Fair enough. Then what we would do is vector of vector of int and then we would use this one only vector of vector of int. Okay? And then we have, we would name it as small, we would name it as n, and this was just a 2D vector, we are doing that. Then what we are doing is vector of int, and then we are again naming it with n, and then 0 itself. Okay, fair enough. Then we had done that, then we are doing helper of, then we are starting off with the very first value from the, from the distance, from the starting point, because so that is 0, 0. And then we have the given matrix and the solution is M and the solve itself. Okay. Then what we were doing is we are again doing vector of vector of int answer itself. Where we would store the answer here. Now answer dot push back. Answer dot push back. We are returning here minus one. Okay. So now what we would do is do is we would use this the solution of n minus one and n minus one. That is, if we are able to reach the end, then what we would do is if we are able to reach if this is equals to zero, it is if suppose you are not able to reach the end, then we would return the answer with the value as minus one. Else we would return the value that we have input. And that's it. Now let us just compile and run and see if we are getting correct or for the sample test case or not. I have not declared the size. 
and yes we are getting connected to the sample test case now let us just some pile and pile and run and see if we can get an ac or not and yes we got an ac that's it for today thank you and have a nice day